Let everything fill with God's spirit and fill with God's love and just ready to bring the word of God to you. I am your host, Pastor Walter Tucker III, and I am the pastor of Truth and Love Christian Church, where we teach the truth and show the love. And this is the worldwide debut broadcast of our new program, Revelation Today. Hallelujah. Give the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Revelation today. I'm so excited, boy. Let's get right into this because we got to get going. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray. Father, we bless you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Oh, how we love you. And we pray now, Father, you be glorified as we get into your word and revelation knowledge will flow freely to the listener. And I thank you, Father, as I decrease, you increase. Be glorified now today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, listen, this is an exciting uh, time because this is a new uh, broadcast, uh, a new uh, program, a new Christian program that God uh, put on my heart, and it's entitled Revelation Today. And what I want you to understand is that, you know, without the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the Lord, there's no understanding. And the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 7, and all thy getting, get understanding. If, you, if you're going to read the Bible, what's the point of reading the Bible if you don't get understanding? And because, let's, let's face it, the Bible says, be not hearers of the word only, but be doers. And so you can't do what you don't understand. Amen? So praise the Lord for wonderful understanding. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to get into the word. But first of all, I want to let you know the foundational text is in uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verses 16 and 17 and in Ephesians 1 16 and 17 it basically tells us that Paul is praying for the church he's praying for believers amen he says I pray God that you would grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you that's that that's our foundational uh, verse and scripture for this particular Christian program. What he's saying is that without the Holy Spirit, you can't understand the Bible. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't understand God. It is all by the Spirit. Uh, 1 uh, Corinthians 2.14 says, A natural man cannot understand the things of God. They're foolishness unto him. So, you know, you can't get mad at people when they don't understand the things of God, because if they don't have the Spirit of God, they're not going to understand the things of God. Say amen, somebody. So listen, I want to give you uh, an example of what I'm talking about, all right? We're going to, uh, today's uh, verse of Scripture is going to be in the book of John, St. John, the Gospel of John. Now, in the Gospel of John, we know that the Gospel of John uh, was written by the Apostle John, and it was written for one key purpose, and that is to prove that Jesus is the Son of God. In other words, it was written to reveal by the Spirit, by God's Spirit to your spirit, that Jesus is God, that He's Lord, that He's deity. You know, the Gospel of Matthew was to prove that Jesus was the Son of David, that He was a Jewish Messiah. Uh, Mark, the, the, the book of Mark was written to prove that Jesus was uh, the, the servant of God, that he was the one who went from works to works to works. And then Luke, uh, that gospel was written to prove that Jesus was the son of man. In other words, that he had the human compassion. He was deity, but he was uh, deity wrapped in humanity. So he was, he was the son of man. But the gospel of John Again, the emphasis is that Jesus is the Son of God, dealing with the deity of God. Now, let's pick this up because uh, in chapter 3, St. John chapter 3, praise the Lord. And uh, verse 1, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Now, a Pharisee uh, was one who was supposed to be the religious, one of the religious leaders at the time. It even says it. It says a ruler of the Jews. Verse 2, This man came to Jesus by night, and said to him, Rabbi, or teacher, master, we know you are a teacher from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. All right? So Nicodemus was a Jewish leader, a Jewish uh, uh, teacher, Pharisee, and he understood 
that nobody could do the miracles that Jesus was doing except God was with him. All right, here we go. Verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, <laughs> Boy, oh boy, boy, look at this. He comes to Jesus at night because he's scared, y'all. <laughs> he's scared that, scared that the rest of the Pharisees will, will know that he went to go see Jesus. Some of y'all scared to go to church because of what you think your friends are going to say. See, see, things haven't changed. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. Don't be, don't be scared. What is it? Don't be scared. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to uh, come to Jesus. Some of y'all afraid to come to church, and then some of y'all afraid when you come to church to come to the altar. Don't be afraid to come to Jesus. Don't be afraid to come to Jesus. He said, come unto me, all you who are weary and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All you who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. In other words, if you want some rest, if you want some relief, it's not in drugs, it's not in alcohol, it's not in sex, it's not in any of that stuff. It's in Jesus Christ. He is where you will get rest. He is where you will get relief. He is where you will get peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. So here comes uh, Nicodemus, and he's coming to Jesus. And it says, he said, uh, Rabbi, uh, yeah, I know that you no one can do these signs unless God is with them. So he had a sense that God was with Jesus, all right? But it's interesting how Jesus responds to what Nicodemus said. Jesus answered him and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Isn't that interesting? That, that's so interesting. The man comes to him, who's a spiritual leader of his day. He's one of the most regarded spiritual leaders, a Pharisee, of his day. And he recognizes that God is with Jesus. But Jesus responds not by saying, well, praise the Lord. I thank you. I'm glad you recognize God's with me. You know, well, uh, yeah, you're right. He doesn't say, he doesn't even, he doesn't even address that. He just says to him, because it does say he answered him. But his answer seems like it's non-responsive. He, he answers him almost like saying he answers him a question with a question. Because really, uh, what was implied in Nicodemus' statement was, uh, I, I believe that God is with you because nobody can do these miracles unless God is with you. And then, so Nicodemus was almost like impliedly asking, so confirm to me, God's with you, right? Who, in other words, he really wanted to know who he was. That's really what it was. The buzz was, who is this guy doing all these miracles? That's, that's what the big controversy was. And Nicodemus didn't know who he was, but he knew that God had to be with him because of what he did. He knew that God, he didn't know who he was, but he knew that God had to be with him because of what he does. And there's a lot of people in the world today, they, they're not sure about who Jesus is, but they figure, well, now, if he did all these miracles, he had to be somebody. And, and of course, you have folk who say, oh, okay, okay, well, we, we agree that he was a prophet, but they just, they don't have the revelation that he was and is the only born son of God. The only begotten of the Father. Are you with me today? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that we're uh, on uh, we, boy, we're simulcasting there. We got, we got, we're online on Facebook. We're online uh, on Roku. We're online on Apple TV. We're just simulcasting today and we're talking about Jesus Christ and who he is. But we're talking about it in terms of the the spirit of revelation. You have to have the spirit or else you can't understand the things of God. You know, there's a scripture that says, don't throw pearls to swine. Y'all familiar with that? It says, don't throw pearls to swine. In other words, no matter how good uh, uh, what you're saying is, if a person doesn't have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, they can't understand you. You say, well, Pastor, then what about uh, talking to the sinner? Well, when you're talking to the sinner, there's only one communication you can give to them relative to God, and that's the gospel. Mm -hmm. All you can do at that point is preach the gospel and let them know that Jesus is Lord and that they need to be saved. That's, that's all you can, you can tell them. And even then, watch this, even then, you don't do the convicting, you don't do the convincing, and you don't do the converting. 
The only one who does the convicting, convincing, and converting is the Spirit. The Bible says, uh, John, book of John again, 844, uh, it says, no one comes to the Father unless he draws them. You see? And how is he drawing people to him? By the Holy Spirit. Only the Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. Somebody asked me a question uh, the other day. Uh, one of my Bible students asked me a question. They said, Pastor, they said, I've heard about uh, an unpardonable sin. What's the unpardonable sin? What's the only sin that would keep you from being saved, from getting to heaven? And, you know, is it is it murder? Is it lying? Is it adultery? You know, is it homosexuality? You know, what, what is the only sin? And I said, there's only one sin that will keep you from getting to heaven. You know what that is? is it, those that believe and are baptized shall be saved. Those who believe not and, and are not baptized shall be what? Shall be damned. In other words, uh, the only sin that's going to keep you out of heaven is that you reject the ministry of the Holy Spirit when he tells you that Jesus is Lord. When he, when he, when he uh, uh, knocks on the door to your heart and he lets you know, hey, Jesus is knocking and he's trying to come in and you reject that, well then, hey, you, you, you're not going in heaven. In fact, here's the way Jesus said it. Uh, you're familiar with John 3.16, right? God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Watch this. He says this. Same chapter, actually, in John chapter 3, same chapter. He says, watch this, verse 17. For God did not the world to condemn the world, but he sent him into the world that he might that the world might be saved. Now watch this, verse 18. He who believes in him, who? The Son of God, the only born Son of God, that's Jesus, is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I need to read that again. He who does not believe, he who does not believe is condemned already. In other words, you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. He who does not believe is condemned already because he does not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's powerful right there. That's powerful right there. That was John chapter 3, and that particular verse was verse 18. That particular verse was verse 18. What, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you that the only sin that's going to keep you out of heaven is the sin of of rejecting, not believing the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit who is inviting you and drawing you and, and, and asking you to believe in the Son of God, in the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. And, and uh, the truth of the matter is, when you reject His offer, when you reject His invitation, when you reject His ministry, that, that you, you, you remain in your sins. Because it just said in verse 18, you're already, you were born in sin. So you're already condemned in sin as you came into the world. But, haha, -ha, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you don't have to stay in sin. You don't have to be, listen, you don't have to be dead in sin, spiritually dead in sin. You can receive Jesus Christ and then become dead to sin. <laughs> You don't have to be dead in sin. You can accept Christ and become dead to sin, all right? And then you, you got it made. Now, once you become dead to sin and you're alive under righteousness, alive in the spirit, now revelation knowledge can flow. Now revelation knowledge can flow to you. As the Apostle Paul said, I pray that you would grant them the spirit of wisdom. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. I pray that you would grant them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. He was talking to believers. He was saying, now that you have the Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will communicate with your, will communicate with your human spirit, the heavenly spirit, the Holy Spirit, will communicate with your human spirit about the things of God. Because you have the Spirit now. So that's how you get revelation today, tomorrow, and the next day, and the next day. Praise the Lord. All right, let's, let's pick this back up. We're still in uh, one of the most important chapters in the Bible, and that's John chapter 3. St. John chapter 3, written by the Apostle John, 
as he was moved on by the Holy Spirit and the Apostle John being that beloved disciple. He, he, he calls himself the disciple whom God loved. Well, I don't know if I could argue with him about that because, you know, when Jesus was on the cross, one of his last seven sayings was, uh, uh, Son, uh, see your, your mother. Mother, see your son. Son, here is your mother. Mother, here is your son. Meaning, Jesus committed his mother Mary to the Apostle John. Now he had 12 disciples. Of course, Judas had betrayed him and left. But out of those 11 that were left, including Peter, he did not, he did not uh, commit the care of his mother to Peter. He didn't commit him to James or, or Philip or Thomas or any of the other folk. He committed the care of his mama. <laughs> Come on now. You know, you, you're telling somebody to take care of your mother. You're somebody you really trust. That was John. So I, I would say that when John said he was the disciple whom Jesus loved, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him, okay? Because obviously Jesus must have loved him very, very much to, to commit the charge of his mother, the stewardship of his mothership. So let's pick this back up. John chapter 3, we're reading from the book of the beloved disciple, John. And we're going to pick it up at verse number 3. He said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot see the kingdom of God. This is so important. Did you just hear what he just said? He answered Nicodemus not by trying to either defend that he was God or, or uh, uh, get the big head because the man said that God was with him. He just said, if you don't have if you're not born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. In other words, you don't have spiritual eyes and you can't even begin to comprehend the kingdom of God. Now, to prove that what Jesus just said was true, it's amazing. This is a, a, a truism. To prove what he just said was true, that you can't understand the kingdom of God unless you were born again. The word born again, if you study it out in the Greek, it means born from above or born from heaven. Or born of the Spirit. To be born again means to be born of the Spirit or to be born from above. The first birth, when you came out of your mother's womb, that was that was your first birth. That was a natural birth. That was a natural birth. You came you came out of the, the womb, out of a water sack. You know, like in those movies when you see the, the woman's pregnant, almost in every movie when she's pregnant, I always had that scene where the water breaks, you know. And when the water breaks, it's, 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 it's on then. Because now comes labor and everybody's panicking and freaking out trying to get to the hospital, right? You've seen it in a lot of movies. My point is, the baby is in a water sack. And later on you're going to see that Jesus says, not only must you be born of water, but you must be born of spirit. Now, many people believe that to mean you must be water baptized and born and then born of the spirit. But, but I submit to you that that's not what it means. He's talking about because in, other, no, in order to understand the text, you must have good reading of context. In order to understand text, you must understand context. And the context is he's talking about natural versus supernatural. He's talking about natural versus spirit. And he said the first birth is natural. That's a water birth. It's through the, the water of, of, of a woman. Okay? The second birth is a born again birth and that's spirit. You can't see it with your natural eye. Well, you can see a birth with your natural eye, the first birth. I, I was in there when my wife had the baby. Both of our children. I was in there for both births. Now, the generation before me, my father, I, used, I asked my mother, I said, was dad in there? When I was born, she said, child, please. <laughs> he was out in the waiting room. So that generation, they, they didn't, listen, the daddy was in the waiting room and, and there were no cameras either. You know how people do now. They got the camera. They got the cameras. They go, Ooh, we don't see all that, but they got it. <laughs> they got it. But but the point is, uh, you can see the natural birth with your natural eye. But that spiritual birth, no. You can't see it with your natural eye. When somebody says, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, they just got born again if they believed it in their heart and they confessed it with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. They got born again, but, but, but you don't see anything. But that's the birth that you need for your eyes to be open to the kingdom of God. So as we go forward in this ministry of, of all the teaching that I'm going to be sharing with you, the key is it's not going to 
profit you anything if you're not born again. If you're not born again, if you don't give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, invite him in your heart. Repent of your sins and invite him in your heart. You, th this won't help you. <laughs> it won't help you at all. It, it, I mean, it might sound interesting to you, but it won't really change your life. I love uh, what one of my buddies, Bill Winston, said. He said, he said, revelation brings the revolution. Revelation brings the revolution. Let me add to that. I just got some more revelation on that. Salvation brings the revelation. And revelation brings the revolution. In other words, if you don't get saved, you're not going to have the spirit of revelation. And if you don't have the spirit of revelation, you're not going to change your, your what they say, you, what's that song say? You got you to gotta change your evil ways, your wicked ways, however it went. You got to change your ways. Because mm -hmm. once you uh, get born again, born of the Spirit, you're going to start getting more revelation by the Spirit. That's the Holy Ghost's job, to give you revelation, to convict you, to lead you, guide you, teach you. Uh, John, same book of John, chapter 14, verse 26, 14, verse 15, 26, both of them. John 14, 26 and 15, 26 tells you about the Holy Spirit and his ministry. And he's the teacher of the church. So he'll teach you and he'll guide you into all truth. But but, but it's not going to profit you at all if you're not born of the Spirit. So let me, let me get this before I run out of time. Here we go. He says, unless you're born again, you can't see the kingdom of God. Now look, look at this truism. How this, what he just said, is going to be proved by Nicodemus' response. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Did you see that? The, the, this is exactly what Jesus was saying. The man's not born again. He's not born of the Spirit. So he could not understand what Jesus was saying. He just said, how can a man be born again? How can a man, listen to what he said, how can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? He didn't understand what Jesus said no more than the man in the moon because he had not been born again and didn't have a, 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 a new regenerated spirit where he could get, have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So Jesus answered him in verse 5 and said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit. There it is. You have to, you have, to have a first natural birth, but you have to have a spiritual birth. If you don't have the spiritual birth, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. There it is. He says you can't enter unless you're born of the Spirit, and you can't what? You can't see it, perceive it, understand it. Of course you can't see it. The Spirit, the Bible says God is a Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is Spirit. So he likens Spirit, one of the symbols of Spirit is wind. Oh boy, I'm going to give you all a little bonus. I, I, we had a, in the Bible study, we had a really, you're you going to like this. Trust me, you're going to like this. I'm not going to charge you X for this. In Bible study, we were we were asking the question, what did it mean when the Bible said uh, that God met with Adam, the first man, in the cool of the day? In the cool of the day. And we were asking whether or not that was what we call morning or evening. Long story short, it was homework assignment. We did some research. And I studied it out, and I found out that that word cool, cool of the day, is actually the word ruach and for you good bible students in the hebrew the holy spirit guess what the word holy spirit is in, in hebrew is ruach hakodesh so the word ruach is is that word that is there when it says in the cool of the day what it was what he was saying is god met with man uh by his spirit when the spirit uh came into the garden and and at that time of the day well what time was that it was at the beginning of the day, but you say, well, oh, so that was in the morning. No, 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 no. For God said in, in the Hebrew calendar, in Hebrew time, the day begins when? In the evening. The day begins at dusk, in, in, at six. So God met with man in the ruach or the spirit or the wind of the day. When the spirit came into that garden, it was like wind. And the Bible talks about this. In fact, I think he's going to talk about it right here. Let's get to it right now. Watch this. He says it. He says, he says, uh, verse 5, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now watch this. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. What is he talking about? Natural. 
And then that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Spiritual. See why I said water and spirit? And that is, that this, this doesn't have anything to do with water baptism. It has to do with the two types of births. That's what he's talking about. One is a birth of the flesh. And the second one is a birth of the spirit. He says it right there in verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. If you've been born of the flesh, you are a natural man. A natural woman. Okay? But you can't understand the things of God. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, you actually have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. And he's speaking to your human spirit. You can begin to start understanding the things of the Spirit. Listen to this. This shows you what I was saying. Verse 7. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. See, he said, don't, don't be shocked that I'm telling you, you got to be born again. He, he, Jesus said it. If you're not born again, not only are you not going to heaven, but you can't, you can't see the kingdom of heaven. You don't have any understanding, spiritual understanding at all. That's what Jesus said. That's why he said you got to be born again. Now, here's the verse I was telling you about. Verse 8. The wind blows where it wishes. Did you hear that? He's talking about one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit, the wind. Uh, he said the wind blow. What are the other symbols of the Holy Spirit? Uh, wind, fire, dove, and what else? And water. Wind, fire, dove, and water. So he says the wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it. But you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who's born in the Spirit. There it is right there. The Ruach. The wind. The Spirit. Like when it says that man, he blew the breath of life into man. He blew the Spirit into man. He blew the Ruach into man. He blew, he blew his Spirit into man. And man became a living soul, uh, as it says in, in Genesis chapter Two. Amen. I believe that's verse 7. So listen, what I'm telling you is that that you need the Spirit. And you need you only get the Spirit when you're born again or born of the Spirit. And if you don't have the Spirit, you ain't gonna understand the things of the kingdom of God. And you're definitely not gonna understand this Bible. Just not. No way. In fact, not only will you not understand them, but you won't uh, appreciate them. You, you, you. There'll be foolishness on you. The Bible says that. It says the. It says the. The word of God is foolishness to those who don't believe. In other words, you will. Uh, what's the word? Despise. That's the word I want. You'll despise the word of God if you don't have the Spirit. Just like folk who who don't tie. They don't have the Spirit, so. They go, man, you just take that money, bring it to a, a pastor, bring that man, you bring it to him. See, they don't have the spirit. They can't understand it. That that's the Bible says the tithe belongs to the Lord. It's holy unto him. It's set apart unto him. But if you don't have the spirit, you, you can't appreciate it. You can't understand it. You know, people keep talking about whether it's the law or it's not even about that. It's it's the it's the word of God. It's just the will of God that you honor him with 10% of your increase. That's just the will of God. People say, well, you know, that was under the law and we're not under the law. Well, two, two problems with that reasoning. First of all, the tithe came before the law. You find it in Genesis chapter 4 with Abel, gave God his first fruit. You find it again in Genesis chapter 14 with Abraham, who tithed to Melchizedek. That was before the law. You find it in Genesis chapter 28 with Jacob, who tied to a tenth of all he had to the Lord. All this came before the law because the law came with Moses. Okay, And then the second problem you have with it is even if you believe that it was something that came with the law, which I just showed you came before the law, but even if you believe it came with the law, guess what? In the New Testament, the law is not, is not uh, forsaken. Jesus said in Matthew 5.17, I did not come to destroy the law. Matthew 5, 17. He said, I did not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. And then in Romans 13 and 10, he said, all of the law is fulfilled by love. See, so what am I saying, people? I'm trying to tell you, 
you got to be. I'm, I'm just like Jesus. You must be born again. Listen, I know we're going to be out of time in a moment, so I don't want to leave this program without giving you an opportunity to invite Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. So would you please pray with me? Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. I believe you paid for my sins. And I believe you rose from the dead to prove your Lord. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And I promise to love and serve you forever. You pray that prayer from your heart. You just got born again. God bless you on the day. Now you are a candidate to be able to understand things by the Spirit of God. God bless you. God keep you. Until we come to this broadcast again, I'm Pastor Walter Tucker, and this is Revelation Today. I love you. God bless you.